before we get started in this tutorial, I'd like to give a massive thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. What is going on everyone? I hope you're having a good weekend. Um, last week I put out a video and it was the beautiful destinations frame blocking transition for Premiere Pro and a whole bunch of you guys asked for it um, for Final Cut Pro. So I'm gonna do a similar thing in this video today. And I don't know, a lot of people might have seen it um, in Nainoa Langer's um, Instagram story a couple days ago. He was actually watching my tutorial for the write on text. So that was super funny to see. Um, and he was sort of making fun of the fact that my tutorial got more views than their actual Venice video. So I'm sorry if you're watching this one again, Nainoa, um, but people like these videos. So I'm going to keep making these beautiful destinations tutorials. So if you're not subscribed yet, make sure that you subscribe. So as I said in this week's video, we're going to do a frame blocking transition for um, Premiere or for Final Cut. So I'm just going to play a little example from their Let's Go Venice video. Um, just to get an idea of what you can do with this transition. So there's a couple of really good examples in there of frame blocking. Um, some people called it a masking transition I got commented on. Um, I think frame blocking is the proper cinematic term because he uses an element um, in the frame and blocks the shot. Um, and then you create a transition out of it because that blocking covers the entire um, length of the shot. Um, so what we're going to do is hop into Final Cut Pro and I'm going to show you two ways to do this. There's one super easy way that I've been doing that isn't as precise, but it gives you a really good result. Um, so I'm going to do this one first because it takes literally no time. Because all we're going to do is use a built-in transition in Final Cut Pro. So if you go over to your transitions, um, just before that, I'll just show you guys the two clips that we're working with. Um, these are both from Gastown in Vancouver. Um, so those are the shots. So what you'll notice is that the movement is consistent for the transition. So in this, we're moving to the right, and then it's going to cut, and then we're moving to the right again um, in that shot there. So that's what you're really going to need in order to make these super smooth, because you want that movement to be consistent, and if possible, make it the same speed throughout. So if you have to do any retiming, make sure you do that before we do the transition. So for the first super easy way, um, go over to the transitions, go down to the very bottom to wipes, and then there's a transition at the very bottom, so sort of deep in the transitions called wipe. So we're gonna do this is throw this on this clip here. So what you'll notice is you can change the direction depending on um, the shot. So for this one, um, we're going to the right. If you wanna drag this, you can change the angle to make it exactly precise of what you want. So this works really well if you have any sort of straight um, straight line that you're using for the transition. So we'll throw that on there. Just to get rid of some stabilization. Cool. Okay, so if we click on this transition here, you'll notice a few different things. We have angle, direction, if you want to make sure that it's right, left, up, down, or custom, and then edge treatment as well. So we'll mess with that later, but what we want to do is just position this exactly where the shot comes in. So if we play this here, this is coming too soon. So we need to drag this out in order to get this edge So that's the edge of the clock that we're filming with to come in just like that. Then we're going to drag this out again. So this is all just playing with depending on what clips you have to make sure that everything works out. And we actually have the wrong direction flip. So what we want is when the clips are moving to the right, um, we need to make sure that the wipe is coming in. 
to the left. So that was my bad. So that looks much better like that. But what you'll notice is there's a hard line right here. So in order to get rid of that, go over to your edge treatment and just drag that border all the way up or until you like what you see. So I like to max this out as much as possible because it gives it a super smooth, sort of flowy transition. It's not going to be a perfect mask, um, but it works really well for this example. So, and that was pretty much the transition. So it's super simple. All it takes is a drag and drop um, to get that shot. And that one looks really good. So that's a super easy way to do it. Um, the next way to do it here, if I get rid of this, we're going to use two different lines in order to edit with this clip here. So I'm going to drag this out just a little bit so we have some room to play with here. So we're working with two video lines and then all we're going to have to do is add a draw mask onto the first clip in order to show the clip beneath it. So if you watch my Premiere Pro tutorial, this is going to be pretty much exactly the same, uh, but I'll show it for everyone that's working in Final Cut Pro here. So if you go over to your Effects tab and then go to your Masking, there'll be a button called Draw Mask. What we do is add that to our top clip here. And then if you change your window size to about 50%, um, just to make it a little bit smaller, um, just so we can see the full frame around it instead of having it at fit. So what we're going to do for this is we're not going to need very many control points because this is a perfectly straight line. Um, so we can sort of make it whatever angle we want to with the control points. So if you had a more complicated shape, you'd have to do multiple um, numbers of control points. Um, but for this example, we're just going to do some simple ones. So I'm just going to add couple control points here and we're gonna run with that for now we're going to invert our mask then I'm just gonna drag this off the frame because we don't want anything shown just quite yet so we go over to our control points we're just gonna hit a keyframe just so that it knows um, to start keyframing and then we're basically just going to go frame by frame um, and start skipping towards when we see this line start to come in. So our line is going to be about there. I'm just going to change the angle of this a little bit. And then in, Premier, or in Final Cut Pro, you can grab a line and just start pulling that out, which I think is super cool. So we're just going to drag this. all the way across. And the clip is done just like that. So that is a super quick draw mask. So as I said before, if you have a more complicated shape, you'll have to do multiple control points. And then if you change the shape type, to Bezier, um, you can get some, um, or B splines, or you can get some rounded curves um, if you have an arch shape, but it works really well if you have um, anything straight lined. Okay, so if I exit out of our draw mask here, we can give this a quick play. So that is pretty much the effect that we want. If you go into your draw mask, you can change the feather. Um, so similar to what we did with the wipe transition, we can change our feather on here and increase that. You can type in a number if you need something that has more of a fade to it, similar to the wipe. And then you can play with the fall off too, depending on your um, shot, just to get exactly what you look like. But that is the transition or for today guys i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial if you guys want to see more beautiful destinations tutorials then make sure you let me know in the comments down below thanks for watching guys and i'll see you guys next time once again i need to give a big thank you to squarespace for supporting this week's video if you guys are familiar with the products um, they offer great uh, website builders as well as domains or online store 
I actually use one for my personal website. Uh, if you go to markwebstercreative.com, this is my online portfolio that I have for my design work as well as some of my video work as well. So this is a few of the projects that I have built in school. Um, I did some speakers, an amplifier, and a coat hanger. And Squarespace was perfect because I was able to create this whole website in pretty much a day and it's been really good. Um, so if you guys are interested in 10% off, go to squarespace.com. Then forward slash Mark Webster for 10% off your first order. So thank you guys. As always, I'd really appreciate if you guys go, um, if you are building a website, go through this link um, and make sure you get that 10% discount. Thank you guys and I'll see you next time.